today we're going to be making a jar file for our code. Now, there are two different ways of making a jar. The first is just a standard jar file, which is just an archive of Java code. It looks just like a zip file, but the extension instead of .zip is .jar. And it's the way that Java stores information that it can use it later. So what we want to go ahead and do is we're going to go over to our project. And this is a way you can actually take your projects home and work on them. If there's, say, for example, there's a problem with the internet, like there's a giant storm happening on the East Coast. So we right-click on our project, and we choose Export. And under Java, right here, we have three options. Jar file, java.com, runnable jar. We're going to first choose the jar file method. We hit Next. We then are brought up with this window. It's asking us, what do we want to export? We're going to put in here. And if you notice, we have a dash right here. That means not all the files are going in. I'm going to take out the .ds store. On a Mac, that's kind of like the thumbs db file on a PC. We don't need that, so I'm not going to add it to it. But if I click this lovely little down triangle right here, it also shows me what else is going inside that. And hey, look, I've got a source folder. And the source folder has a solid check. That means everything is selected in there. So if I actually click that down triangle, we can see that everything inside that is selected. And so look inside my package. I have all that stuff in there. I'm going to take out the DS store box again, like I said. Go down here, don't have a DS store on that one. Happiness and joy, that makes me happy. Go ahead and close that back up. So all of my source folder, except for my DS store file, is being added to this. Now, I can have it export my class files that actually runs the code. And that's great, we can use that later. But for this one, we're just making an archive of our code so we can, for example, take this project and import it back in. And so what I want to make sure I have a checkbox on is again, that export Java source files and its resources. So those are all the files that belong with this. The export generated class files are the files that go along with this to actually make it so it's a runnable information. But we're not worried about that. The next section down here is destination of directory. Where am I going to put this? I'm going to put this in my first project, pm.jar. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and browse. And I'm calling this first project pm. I'm putting it on my desktop just because it's a quick place to find it. I can easily email it out and get it to the different things. And so I go ahead, name it, hit save, desktop, first project.jar. Now I have options that I can uh, do on here. I can compress the in uh, contents, add director entries, and override existing files without warning. Since this is a brand new thing, I don't have to worry about overriding existing files without warning. If you're going to use this to update files or to re-export, you will want to probably ch put a checkbox in that, but for this time, no worries there. We'll go ahead and hit next. We have some options here for handling problems. Even if my code is not working, I want it to export class files with compile warnings or errors. Again, I'm doing this because I'm exporting this for my own purposes. If you're actually exporting this to say, for example, create a library or use something for another purpose, like this is actual finished product, you would not want to export class files that have problems. But for in this case, we're just taking code home so we can use it. We'll make sure those are checked. Okay, create source folder structure. Uh, we don't have to worry about that, but we can put checkbox in that. Build projects if not already built automatically. That's great. And so we go ahead and hit finish and it's done. All it did is it created the file. I'll go ahead and go to my desktop now, first project pm.jar. And it's a jar file. Now to open this, in Mac I can just right click on it and say open with and go to archive utility. There's module 0, pm, am, ctech, and all my files. I right click and I import and I'm going to import an existing project. I choose next. And this time instead of setting a root directory, I'm going to choose an archive file. And I will browse, go to my desktop. Under my desktop, I go to my jar file that has my PM project. First project PM jar. I hit open. And look, there's first project. Hit finish. And there's my first project. All my files right back in. Happiness and joy. To create a jar file, again, we go over to the project. We right click, export, go to Java, go to jar, next. We specify what we want to put in there. I make sure that my Java source files and resources are already all in there. I browse and give it a new project name. Next, hit finish, and it's done.